Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna. Today is Sri Krishna Janmashtami. We're starting from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 4, entitled Transcendental Knowledge. And we're on text 9. And today's August 11th, 2020. Janma means birth. In this case, more technically, it means appearance. And that's what we're talking about here. And Astami means the eighth day of the waning moon. So even though Krishna appeared on the eighth day of the waning moon, when Krishna appeared, the moon, being a person, decided to be full because he was so happy. Mm. 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 Yes. So text nine. Um, we do have it on the board there. Okay. Text nine. Uh, text nine, chapter four, Bhagavad Gita. When Lina Kanta Prabhu referenced this verse earlier, uh, just a few hours ago, so we will continue the discussion here on Sri Krishna Janmasu. Janma. Janma. Karma. Cha. Cha. Me. Divyam, Evam, Yo, Betty, Tatvata, Chakva, Deham, Punar, Janma, Naiti, Mam, Eti, Sorjuna. Janma karma chame divyam. Janma karma chame divyam. Evam yogati tatvata. Evam yogati tatvata. Chakva deham punar janma. Chakva deham punar janma. Nati mameti sarjuna. Nati mameti sarjuna. Janma karma chame divyam. Evam yogati tatvata. Tatva deham punar janma. Nati mameti sarjuna. Janma karma chame divyam. Evam yo veti tatvata. Chakva deham punar janma. Naiti mameti sarjuna. Janma karma chame divyam. Evam yo veti tatvata. Chakva deham punar janma. Janma karma chame divyam. Evam yo veti tatvata. 
Evanyo Veti Tatvatam Tatvadeham Punarjanma Tatvadeham Punarjanma Janma Parma Chame Dirgyam Evam Yopeti Tatvatama Tatvadeham Punarjanma Naiti Mameti Sarjunam Janma Karma Chame Dirgyam Evanyo Veti Tatvata Tatva Deham Punar Jamma Naiti Mameti Sarjuna Janma Karma Chame Dirgyam Janma Karma Chame Dirgyam Evam Yoveti Tatvataha Evanyo Deham Punar Janma Bhaktadeham Punar Janma Naiti Mam Eti Sarjuna Naiti Mam Eti Sarjuna Janma Janma Karma Work Work. Uh, also, also. Name. Name. of mind, divyam, transcendental, transcendental. Evam. Evam. like this, like this. Yeah. yeah, anyone who, anyone who. Leti. Leti. knows, knows. Tattvata. Tattvata. In, reality. in reality, tattva, tattva. leaving aside, Deham. Deham, this body, Kuna, again. again, Janma, Janma. Earth. Earth, Na, Na. never, never. Eti. Eti, does again, does again. No, rather does attain, does attain. Ma. Ma, unto me, unto me. Eti. Eti, does attain, does attain. Sa. Sa, he, he. Arjuna. Arjuna, oh Arjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Lord's descent from his transcendental abode is already explained in the sixth verse. One who can understand the truth of the appearance of the personality of Godhead is already liberated from material bondage, and therefore he returns to the kingdom of God immediately after quitting this present material body. Such liberation of the living entity from material bondage is not at all easy. The impersonalists and the yogis attain liberation only after much trouble and many, many births. Even then, the liberation they achieve, merging into the impersonal Brahman yogi of the Lord, is only partial, and there is the risk of returning again to this material world. But the devotee, simply by understanding the transcendental nature of the body and activities of the Lord, attains the abode of the Lord after ending this body and does not run the risk of returning again to this material world. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that the Lord has many, many forms and incarnations, the Veta, Majutta, Manadi, Manantarupa. Although there are many transcendental forms of the Lord, they are still one and the same supreme personality of Godhead. One has to understand this fact with conviction although it is incomprehensible to mundane scholars and empiric philosophers. As stated in the Vedas, 
Eko Devo Nichelan Rakto Bhaktivyapi Vidyatma. Quote, the one supreme personality of Godhead is eternally engaged in many, many transcendental forms in relationships with his unalloyed devotees. End quote. This Vedic version is confirmed in this verse of the Gita personally by the Lord. He who accepts this truth on the strength of the authority of the Vedas and of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and who does not waste time in philosophical speculations, attains the highest perfectional stage of liberation. Simply by accepting this truth on faith, one can without a doubt attain liberation. The Vedic version Tathamasi is actually applied in this case. Anyone who understands Lord Krishna to be the Supreme, or who says unto the Lord, You are the Supreme, you are the same Supreme Brahman, the personality of God, is certainly liberated instantly, and consequently his entrance into the transcendental association of the Lord is guaranteed. In other words, such a faithful devotee of the Lord attains perfection. And this is confirmed by the following Vedic assertion. One can attain the perfect stage of liberation from birth and death simply by knowing the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There is no alternative because anyone who does not understand Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is surely in the mode of ignorance. Consequently, he will not attain salvation simply, so to speak, by licking the outer surface of the bottle of honey or by interpreting the Bhagavad Gita according to mundane scholarship. Such empiric philosophers may assume very important roles in the material world but they are not necessarily eligible for liberation. Such puffed up mundane scholars have to wait for the causeless mercy of the devotee of the Lord. One should therefore cultivate Krishna consciousness with faith and knowledge, and in this way attain perfection. Omangantamiranasya <laughs> Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Saganaraganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Paritana Sahitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatate Kopi Shagopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namos Tute, Tapta Kanta Nagorange Rathe Vrindavadish Kure Vishabhanu Sute Devi Kanamami Hari Kriye Pancha Kalpata Yugyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Gyeva Cha Patita Nam Pavani Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasani Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Janma Karma Chame Divyam Evam Yoveti Tatvata Chakvadeham Punar Janma Naiti Mamiti Sarjuna One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. 
Krishna, 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 Krishna Kesha, the Krishna Kesha, the Krishna Kesha, the Raksha, the Mum. Krishna Kesha, the Krishna Kesha, the Krishna Kesha, the Pahi Mum. Krishna, 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 Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hey. Hey, Krishna. Oh, yeah. So, Krishna's talking about not taking birth again in the material world. So if we're awake and intelligent and things like that, that should be that should be a very treasured goal. That should be a very treasured goal. Wait. Fifty years ago or so, there was a song. We gotta get out of this place. Okay. If it's the last thing we ever do. <laughs> so most of us. We're like, well, let's try with this place. Pretty nice. What do you mean? Krishna says, in Bhagavad Gita, Mishnu, Sasha, Shukashik, Adi, Sile, Yadatam, Pisinam, Kashyamam, Vati, Kakata. Krishna says, and he was speaking 5,000 years ago, that even amongst humans, the human, the human form is the form of birth where the spirit soul really gets to consciously choose that I don't, I don't want to continue the cycle of birth, death, will be used, disease. What liberation? It said it's it's very rare. But one amongst thousands even try for it, and you know, most them it's rare that someone achieves success. It gets to be a fraction of millions, so it's rare. And you know, so this is Maya. What Maya means illusion, and a function of Maya we were reading about them earlier. The numbers leading leading the tenth canto, fourth chapter. And uh, yeah, one of the functions was other not make a shakti, which means that the problem is we don't know we have a problem. Okay, you know, in coach training, sometimes you go through stages of, especially in part two in coach training, we focus on stages of habit change, and the first thing we call pre-contemplation or pre-awareness, where um, yeah. Like, uh, um, Everyone in my life can, can see I have a problem, but I don't see it. It can be characterized by, um, uh, well, um, everyone, everyone's allowed one vice and mine's gambling. It's not a problem. Well, if you're 250000 dollars in debt, your car's been taken away, your kids are up for adoption. <laughs> 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 okay, and then you know, if you're compassionate, you uh, you uh, try to get me like, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm a little imbalanced, but you know, so like that, or you're just in front of someone has a, <laughs> someone has a physical disease, someone has a physical, you know, no, no, there's no problem, and then the disease okay, kills. <clears throat> so we can apply that in the sphere. So. So the nature of Maya is to be think like we're happy and content here. We're, I think, well familiar with the story of, of Indra, who was cursed to come down as a pig. So Indra was enjoying like everything, everything anything in heaven, any time, heavenly enjoyment. And then, uh, yeah, okay, so then he's wallowing in the mud. And then it was time for him to, for, for time to go back to enjoy in heaven. And Brahma says, look, he's interested in resuming your post. Andrew just thinks like this. Brahma, Brahma's just like envious because I got this beautiful pig wife and I got my, my smart, cute piglet kids and like that. <clears throat> How are you, Krishna? I know the story. It's funny. You like that story? He goes back to heaven when he finally sees like, oh, the butcher is like taking his 
wife and the piglets to the slaughterhouse and he's next in line. Then it's like he's a wake up call. So that's the thing. Like we had the example of someone who's not, not got a problem with gambling, just recreational gambling, but then maybe like there's some wake up call hitting, hitting rock bottom, hitting rock bottom. So, um, yeah, so, so intelligence means like, we don't, we, we don't need to go further down. We get it. We get it. I'm like a fish out of water here. I'm, I'm like a fish out of water. And like, whether it's heaven or whether it's, it's the pig stuff, like, this is not my home. This, this is not my home. The you know, Vaishnava chariots give so many heavy metaphors. They're heavy, but they actually aren't heavy enough to really match reality material existence. This morning we quoted Hari Hari Bifalai Jamba Gunai Suni Ajanya Bisha Taini. It's like, yeah, I, I have this human form of life and I've not celebrated Janmashtami. I've not worshipped Radha Krishna. It's like I'm knowingly drinking poison. Prahlad Maharaj, he says, he, he says, it's like, until my spiritual master, Narad Muni, gave me the wake-up call about what the purpose of life really is. It's like I was, like I had fallen into a pit of snakes. Yeah. This is the blazing forest fire of material existence. So it's, imagine we're in a pit of snakes. We're trapped in the, you know, how terrifying. Yeah. So that's it. That's what the Acharya is like. Really. Wake up, not, not, to, not to be in some panic or drama, rather just the opposite, to come out of the drama of material life, to come out of the drama of trying, oh no, I'll be happy once I fix this, and I'll have, uh, then I'll have more than him, and then uh, whatever, to come out of that drama and, and be conscious and be, and be urgent for um, not taking birth again. Um, to, to realize that um, any, any situation in the material world, it's like a fish out of water, it's going to be a desperate situation, we won't be fulfilled. And so, so Krishna's He's saying, all right, so to know the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities, then, that, then, then we're liberated to know. And of course, no, it doesn't, doesn't just mean cognitive knowledge. To, to know means, because I can say, oh, okay, all right, so Krishna is transcendental. Okay, God, yeah, I'm liberated. Krishna is active and transcendental. Okay. To what extent do my activities, do my words, do my thoughts, uh, give evidence of, oh, I'm, I have direct experience of this. That, that's what's talked about. That's what's talked about. So, Prabhupada says, Prabhupada says, uh, someone here, he says, it's, it's not at all easy. Now, in a sense, it is. Oftentimes, Prabhupada would say, right, there's one of Prabhupada's biographies, but Shruti Kirti Prabhupada, he named, he called the biography. What is the difficulty? What is the difficulty? So it seems like a contradiction. Because yeah. you know, oftentimes probably would just get simple guidance, increase in consciousness, and go, what is the difficulty? Uh, it seems pretty difficult, probably. Right? <laughs> so it's, like, it's actually simple, and we make that distinction. Yeah, simple doesn't mean easy. It is easy to whatever extent we're fully surrendered. We're fully commit, committed, a clear intention that doesn't get in the way. Like, um, I'm, I'm completing my spiritual work in this lifetime. Yeah, just, I, I just want to please Krishna, to please his pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada, nothing else. Yeah, but what about Prabhupada? So, and then to the extent that we're, well, yeah, just about that. Yeah, I think. Um, Maybe give it 10% today, maybe next year, see how it goes, some interesting possibilities. 
this way and that way, as long as we're casual, then it's a struggle. Then it's a struggle. <clears throat> so, commitment could, in the modern day, in the postmodern day, commitment uh, for freedom. I see there's a high pitched noise, but I don't know how to uh, do what that would be. Something like this is there's a chat. Yeah, that's what they said. I'm not getting it. He, he said he's not getting it. He's not getting it. He's not getting it. Sounds like it's just the back to yoga discussion. He's getting it. Okay. I'm also getting poor sound quality on this end. And um, Drew's saying the same thing. Says David's uh, volume, voice. volume of voice is loud. I I don't get the high pitch sound like just now when you were talking, Atmananda. I don't hear it. It's uh, whenever sound comes in through Sabato. For, for us, at least, there's a high pitch uh, sound there. I feel it so much, but is there have more sensitive ears? Yeah, I know what you mean. Is it better? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Rama. The volume is lower now. Yeah, the high pitch is gone, but it, it's, it's very quiet. Yeah, we don't hear you very well, David. Same low volume. Is it just basic volume control that needs to go up or something? <laughs> If necessary, we can sp switch it to my computer. Sure, yeah, because your, your computer was working all the time. Yeah. Okay. You want to bring it here? Mm -hmm. Just to yeah. If I log off from here, it's going to keep running. I don't know, but. The, 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 vol the volume is much better now, just some vibration. There is a background noise, but the volume is better. Right. Is it workable? Okay, we'll go with it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. All right, so. All right. So, all right, so while we were endeavoring to address the sound, we were chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. So that's what this verse is about. As I say, that, okay, so what's that mean? To, to realize, to understand the nature of Krishna's appearance, disappearance, and activities. It's just like, to enter fire, one needs to be one with fire. Only fire can enter fire. Only fire can enter fire. And, and so um, we can try to think about it with mundane uh, mind. 
and we won't go there. It means like, okay, so like, what what is that? Hmm. What is that transcendental nature of Krishna's activities and appearance? It's hearing and chanting the kirtan that Bhakti Lakta was just reading. That's it. That's the nature of Krishna's pastimes with the gopis, of Rupa Goswami, of writing, writing his literature. So um, that we're studying Bhagavad Gita, we're absorbed in japa. So that, so that, so in order to realize the transcendental nature of Krishna's appearance, activities, and disappearance, we need to be one with that nature. We need to be energetically one with that nature. It's not like we can't be reserving ourselves. And so let me try to figure it out. So the process is bhakti yoga. Devo devo devotional service is that transcendental nature. And that's why Krishna says later in Bhagavad Gita. He says, only by devotional service can I be known. He doesn't say Gatva Mam or Karma Mam. Or yoga by mystic perfection, only by devotional service, because all the other process, all the other processes, they're there for a reason to lead one to the transcendental purpose of bhakti, and all those other processes, they are intrinsically rooted in matter, so they will never in themselves give us transcendence. They're they're rooted in matter, karma, my work. Even, even if it, like, so sometimes we speak about karmis. Oh, the karmis. Okay, sometimes we speak about the karmis. To be, to be a karmi is a very elevated thing. Okay, to understand. Like, um, um, yes, certainly, uh, my uh, coming to Krishna, you know, coming to Krishna consciousness was far, 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 far below karma. I'm still far below karma. Karma is a very elevated thing. So for the most part, the human world is in deep karma, which means we're engaged in activity that produces reaction that's, that's not according to any regulation. It's just sending us down into animal species. Karma actually means, from that point of view, oh, we're following the Vedas, or following some biblical regulations. We're actually elevating ourselves. But still, it's based in, it's based in matter. Jnana yoga, it's based in my, my intelligence. Mystic yoga, based on my power of austerity. It's meant to bring us to transcendence. So bhakti, bhakti yoga, bhakti is inherently transcendental. And so we engage in bhakti from wherever we're at, whatever mixture of modes we're at. And then bhakti herself, Krishna, this is this process itself revealing. Two verses from now, also in for, for, this whole fourth chapter, this beginning of fourth chapter especially, it's about Krishna describing the nature and quality of his appearance. And then uh, there's a series of four verses, and this is the last of, of those four. And Krishna is describing his appearance. And then two verses from now, Krishna says, um, Read the translation. So Krishna says, uh, All of them, as they surrender unto me, I reward accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects of Sunakrita. We were talking about this verse this morning. And, and so, um, so there's a saying, we, you, you, you can't take heaven by storm. So, of course, in the Vedas, heaven itself is material. But here we're talking about the spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan. So, 
Krishna is self-revealing. Bhagavad Gita is self-revealing. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it's self-revealing. I mean, like, if we really want to understand it, we need to participate. We need to participate with heart and soul in Krishna reveals himself. That's personalism. That's personal. It's not ultimately dependent on my hard work, my austerities, my figuring it out, my intellect. Earlier today in the reading, Ananda quoted the aphorism, work, work like everything depends on us, pray like everything depends on Krishna. So, yeah, we, we want to give our full effort with our intellect, with our external, with our mental work. Yeah, we want to give our full effort. Realizing, realizing that ultimate, the ultimate factor is the super soul. Once we commit, then providence moves. The ultimate factor. So, so this is, um, so we engage in devotional service and devotional service itself is self -reduced. Krishna is self-revealing. So that's the process. That's the process. Krishna says, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities is not, is not forced to take the course again. So first, getting, getting like, yeah, I really want that as my goal. I really want that as my goal. I don't want to be forced to take birth again. Well, maybe it's a commitment, maybe it's a day, maybe it's a day. So as long as we have any maybe, as long as any other desire, okay, then that desire, that desire, that consciousness will take us to another birth after the spirit soul leaves this body, in the case of the, the, the subtle body. So to get you, yeah, that's, that's the goal I want. And I commit to it like we've never committed to, to anything. The nice thing is that that hundred percent, that's what Krishna is urging us towards. And at the same time, Krishna says, Neha bi kama nasa ste, prati maida viti te, spapamapi asa dharma se, trayate matobaya. Krishna says, in this process, even if we do one percent, that's for our eternal benefit. Govarta arto, govarta apto, bhajitam svadharmata. There's no loss or diminution. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we were talking about you know, the misconception of freedom. Misconception of freedom, more and more as decades go on, generations go on, is what, what goes in the name of freedom is actually being a being a sold out slave to to the whims of our, our senses and mind. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna. This is the idea that whatever is happening, keep absorbed in transcendence. This is the idea. Because whether it's uh, technology or, or um, uh, family members or health, or health or health or the weather or pandemics, yeah, we we can count. There's going we can count on it. There's going to be pandemics. Are you hearing me online? How's it going? Yes. Okay. Looks like you did good, Ramachandra. Uh, it's Thanks. it's like somewhat muffled, but uh, you know, we can st still make it out. It's like workable. Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. So. So the world is made of disturbance. The world is made of disturbance. And that doesn't mean we need to be disturbed. That's the key. 
how to not be disturbed in the face of disturbance. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Engaging in that transcendental process of devotional service. But I'm not qualified, I'm fallen, whatever. That, that's the thing. Devotional service, it's transcendental. It's transcendental. We could have Brahminical conditioning, sattvic conditioning. We could come from the most degraded, whatever. Every moment we get to engage in that transcendental process of devotional service. That's the, Prabhupada has given us that. Prabhupada has given us that. We engage in that transcendental process of devotional service. Then we're living this verse. Then we're living this verse. And we slip away from the transcendental process of devotional service then we will not figure it out. What's that mean? Even if cognitive, cognitively in some abstract sense, we think we get it, we don't. We chant Hare Krishna. And, and disturbance can be things are gone well. Materially, things are nice. Why should I get intense about Krishna consciousness? Get up at four in the morning. Whoa, I'm going to... I'm going to sleep in. Things are going so well. So whether things are going well or not, well, Maya is designed to pull us away. Ultimately, Maya is Swisti Titi Pralaya Sadhana Shaktirekam Chayevayasya Bhuvanani Vibharti Durga Ichana Vupam Apiyasya Apiyasya so when we get ardently determined, like, like there's a verse when Maharaj Pariksha, and he, he sits down on the Ganges, he's been cursed for seven days. And then it goes, and it just, I mean, I forget, I, I forget the exact quote, but, but the way, Sutta Goswami describes it just like he's finished, f finished with all material duties. Of course, Maharaj Pariksit was always finished with all material duties. He was engaging everything in Krishna consciousness, but still in the past time, just, just finished. Just, and we can see by the results, because like, like, like I'm so much appreciating the past 15 hours, this 15 hours engaged even if I'm in my office doing something else, but I'm either kirtan here. And we started a morning program at Malini's ashram. And so it's like 15, so this is absorption. So Maharaj Priksh, like, no, I'm not, I'm not even taking a moment to sip water. I'm just hearing Bhagavatam, right? So we can feel that transcendental atmosphere. It's not theoretical. Krishna says, Projakshiva, Gamam, Dramyam, Shushukam, Kaktur, Mabhiyam. It's directly experienced. It's not, well, do you believe that? And in this platform of consciousness, that whole like conversation, well, I believe that I'm, I'm, I'm a Buddhist. Do you believe in Christianity? The whole thing becomes like, the whole thing just becomes so like superfluous nonsense. It's not that Christian, you know, obviously, do, do, Jesus, Buddha, they're on that platform. So we're not saying they're nonsense, but the, the whole discussion, are you with this, are you with that? This kind of, what, what group do you belong to? It's just like, what's that have to do with anything? You know? So this is about transcendental, tra this is transformation, transformation, transformation of heart. And so we're in that conscious and we, we're making plans that when there are disturbances, when things are going great and I have the temptation to get elated and things are gone not at all according to script, I'll become depressed or discouraged. What's my plan to be transcendental moment to moment, day to day? Especially, especially, when, when there's going to be those predictable, un, un, unpredictable disturbances and annoyances and irritations. And we know those are relatively minor words, disturbing. We get tragedies, we get catastrophes. And uh, to continue with, um, yeah, no, I'm not disturbed. Um, it, it's not, I'm not trying to not be disturbed because I'm truly experiencing param drishta nibartate, rasa varjama sopiasa, param drishta nibartate. Um, that higher taste of Krishna consciousness in, you know, the, the soul experiencing itself as a soul in a, in a bhakti devotional service attitude towards Sri Krishna, the, 
the fountainhead of all incarnation to you in the Svayam Bhagavan, Ete Chamsa Club Pumsam, uh, Krishna's two Bhagavan Svayam. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so to, um, to understand this, we need to be one with it in nature, in quality. We trust you all, are not, not that we become Krishna. Uh, at the same time, we become just like to enter into fire, we need to be fire. So to enter into the understanding of these pastimes, whether it's Krishna with the gopis, Krishna on the battlefield, then we need to be completely, completely just not interested in flirting with the modes of material nature. Krishna says that most all the world, deluded by the three modes of material nature, they, uh, they don't understand my, my transcendental nature. Aham prakasha sarvasya. Yoga maya samabrita muriyam nami janati lokamamajam rabiyam. He says, uh, yeah, the, those fools influenced by the modes of, of nature, they, they're, they're always going to be covered. We'll always be covered by the, by, by the three modes. So um, the, this verse reads, Janma karma chame dibyam evam yobeti tatva tachat vadeham punarjan manya timam et kisarjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Hare Krishna, thanks for your presence and thanks for giving your oral reception to Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna. I welcome at this time, if anyone would like to ask any questions or share any realizations, inspirations, or comments. I would like to share something. Yes, Ananda Prabhu. Thank you so much for making it clear, helping me to understand that practicing, applying Prabhupada's instructions or Lord Chaitanya's instructions in terms of chanting all the time is becoming one with Krishna, not becoming Krishna, but becoming one with Krishna so that we can enter into him through who, and that's really what, enables us or allows us to um, understand and that helps me understand this first um, yeah. the main point I was going to make was that Prabhupada says something for me quite extraordinary everything he says is extraordinary but in the purport he says one who accepts this truth on the strength of the authority of the Vedas and of the supreme personality of God and who does not waste time in philosophical speculation attains the highest professional stage of liberation now, perhaps, I, I don't know, maybe Prabhupada's talking about two different levels here, but accepting this truth on the strength of the authority, I think it's similar to what Prabhupada says in the introduction to Bhagavad Gita, that if one even theoretically accepts Krishna, then he's eligible. I don't remember exactly the words, but th this, is, this is quite extraordinary that just by accepting that, this truth on basis of those authorities, um, attains the highest perfectional stage of, of liberation. Simply by accepting this truth on faith, one can, without a doubt, attain liberation. So um, that that was uh, quite striking for me, and maybe you'd like to say that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, there's so many. Like, yeah, each each word of the purport, each sentence is rich. You know, we could uh, go into it for hours. And so, yeah, so just accepting. So, Prabhupada, yeah, just, um, I'll read it. The Vedic version is confirmed in this verse of the Gita personally by the Lord. He who accepts this truth on the strength of the authority of the Vedas and of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and who does not waste time in philosophical speculations attains the highest professional stage of liberation. So thank, thanks for drawing our, 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 our attention to that. Yeah, so I think that's, that's kind of like the theme I was trying to, 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 to bring across here. That... Um, that to, to accept means we are humbly, submissively hearing from that transcendental source. And that transcendental source, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, that transcendental 
source, each vibration reveals this eternal absolute truth. And each vibration is identical with the truth that it reveals. Each vibration is fire, right? We, we, we only, only fire can enter into fire. So sure, like all these words of Prabhupada's purports and the Sanskrit and the translations, they reveal absolute truth. Absolute truth means truth that is not changing according to time and space. I am David Wolf. That's relative truth. Was I David Wolf 100 years ago? Will I be David Wolf 100 years from now? No. So it's a relative truth. It has meaning, it has its usefulness, but it's relative. So every syllable here is, re is revealing absolute truth. More than that, every syllable here is non-different from the truth that it reveals. So by accepting, that's what I understand Prabhupada saying, by hearing, by, by accepting these vibrations, these truths from the pure devotee, from Krishna, yeah, we're, 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 we're getting the knowledge and we are, and we are having a, someone who's accepting. And like it's, yeah, it's, thanks for pointing out that word because it's not, it's not, yeah, I accept, but how much ego resistance do I have? Uh, how, how, much, uh, how much doubt am I retaining? Okay, how, how, true, how much do I truly have a childlike spirit of wonder and discovery in truly accept? Accepting doesn't mean blind. It means, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll process it, I'll consider it. Just like, you know, in, like if we go, we, we wanna learn physics, we go to the professor, and we accept the professor is the authority. Doesn't mean we turn off our brain. I accept. Now you said this and that, just like Arjuna is at some point in Bhagavad Gita, he's accepting. He's accepting. And it doesn't mean he doesn't have questions. He goes, well, you said this here. That seems impractical. Uh, let's keep talking. So he's accepting in a childlike spirit of discovery with some health, healthy skepticism. And he's not pretending he understands something he doesn't understand. So that acceptance, it means receiving, receiving Shabda Brahman. And in that receptive, Sajya Rija Varudhyate Chakrita Bhisha Shushpis Takshanat, then the Supreme Lord is revealed in the heart. The nature of Krishna's pastimes and activities are revealed in the heart just by the process of that acceptance. Even, even if what's being talked about is the difference between spirit and matter, or the nature of karma, even what's being talked about, but all, all the truths get revealed in the heart because each vibration from Shabda Brahman is identical with all of these truths. They're, they are self-revealing. It's like a, a, a ray of light is illuminating and it is illumination itself. It's, it's self-illuminating self like that. So that's, so this acceptance is no minor thing. This acceptance means like, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really doing shravanam. I'm really hearing. And so, and Prabhupada, he says with faith and knowledge. So I'm really, it means like, I had all shara tatasaru sangato bhajana kriya. This is the nine step process of devotional service. And, um, and so, so it starts with having enough trust, enough respect for the process, like, okay, all right, I'll hear, let's see what, what's this Gita, uh, what's, what's this Kirtan, what, Japa, okay, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll hear, I'll, I'll hear, I, I, I have enough trust. Sometimes there's like that false thing, like, or, well, I'm a man of reason, not a man of faith. Complete nonsense. You get that? Right? So everyone has faith. Everyone has faith. I make that absolute statement. There's no exception. The choice is where do we place our faith? And our assertion is the most reasonable, intelligent place to put our faith is, is in this process, is in commitment to this process. So we have faith. It means let me give myself to the process. And more and more knowledge gets revealed to us. More and more knowledge revealed to us then naturally my trust in the process deepens. More and more knowledge, more and more divya gan, divya gan, vide prokashito gets revealed to us. 
and then our faith deepens, just like if we're, someone gives us a road map, we traveled 50 miles according to the map, and every landmark was just where it said it should be, deepens my trust in the map. Um, so I was saying previously that in the name of freedom, freedom means to be a, a slave to the senses and mind. So actual freedom is the capacity to commit to my highest good, to commit to that which will, which will actually serve and support me in the best way. And so we can all, how, how free am I to do that? Okay, how free am I to really, because sometimes freedom means no commitment. No, no, freedom means the capacity to commit to that which will really take me forward to a worthy, purposeful goal. That's, that's actual freedom. And so, um, so I can look at like, yeah, so, yeah, so I want this goal of, of being, of, 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 of being uh, one in my energy with this transcendental uh, energy being talked about. Okay, and then, and then because of my addiction to different sensory, mental, and ego gratifications, I'm not able to make that full commitment or, or I'm, I'm keeping myself weak, keeping myself weak because I've still got some attachment. Thank you for uh, your sharing, Atmananda. Bhakti Lata. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Almost like when you're wishy washy, yeah. everything feels hard. Yeah. And it's a drudgery. And it's like, oh. But it's like if I'm just on fire, then I get a certain momentum that I can just yeah. put this into it. So um, I guess I have a question about that just because I, I've been meditating for myself. I feel like I've had zero tolerance for any kind of austerity. Yeah. in my life right now right. or committing yeah. so wholeheartedly what you describe this fire you know this kind of being on fire in the process of devotional service yeah this commitment this practice belief all of that so there's something um i feel like i'm a little um I'm a little bewildered at how to like commit without burning out. Okay. And right. um, I think um, I kind of burned out, and so I feel so little motivation to commit because of the energy required. Yes. So maybe it just feels hard because I'm not. So I don't know. Yeah. If yeah. Like, what's what's the chicken? What's the egg yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. And praying for some kind of like desire to actually commit. But I'm very scared about committing and then breaking the commitment because it really feels like yeah. I'm all committed and then I'm falling away. So I can't trust myself. So um maybe knowing it's not the map problem right, right. Me that wants to go to all these pit stops and take a few a few detours i want to yeah. take a few detours like it looks pretty fabulous let's go to this national park or let's yeah. go to the beach right. so i mean but it's like i kind of feel like i'm enjoying like going to the beach yeah and, yeah. <laughs> and um so wondering about the balance that it's not like a burnout trap and but staying very committed Thanks for that. Thanks for sharing and asking your simultaneously philosophical and personal question that uh, I personally relate to, and maybe everyone here does. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I've, uh, I'm I'm hearing a, a few things or I, a, a few principles come to mind. I mean, I like in in the courses, whether it's foundational events course, okay, like that. And um, you didn't hear about, okay, Bhakti Lot, Bhakti Lot, essentially, some, some didn't hear maybe the first part, um, essentially is like that um, she appreciated the part about, yeah, the process is easy when we're 100% committed, 
and it's a struggle if we're not. She's singing, like, like she's, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but she said, like, she knows she's at a juncture in life where, like, she's not into, like, yeah, I'm going to get up at 2 a.m. and take cold showers. She's just, like, not into big committed austerities at this time. She knows she's not. And then at the same time, she uh, followed up on, on the map analogy, like, um, yeah, the, like, uh, okay, but I kind of enjoy taking a pit stop here and there, and let's visit here. And uh, I have never been to this town, like, like, like that. Okay, at the same time, but then the whole devotional service thing is feeling like a struggle. It's feeling, so you are enjoying, but then, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, like in, in, in the courses, um, yes, okay, so that was my um, summary. Yeah, so that someone in the course, like, we see that, you know, the courses are challenging, foundational. So, 
Um, one thing is like uh, we can look at like uh, you know how, how we how we relate to the term commitment. I don't know, I can say commitment to you so much, but like if my so-called commitment, whether it's devotional service or anything else, if it results in me feeling burnout or resentful or the martyr complex, then I probably have an imbalanced, maybe immature, incomplete understanding of commitment. So commitment includes responsibility for self-care, a commitment with commitment to this project, commitment to this person. And then again, if, if, if it results at the end, I'm feeling hostile, we depleted, nothing left, then, then no, there, I, I had some other agenda. If it wasn't just like, oh, I was in balance, I had some other agenda going on. And, and so, because like if I'm really committed, and, and giving from a clean place. I mean, it, it includes responsibly caring for myself so that in that commitment, at the end of the day, I'm more energized than I was at the beginning. And if I'm not, then um, uh, I, I need to look, what, what, what was my other agenda going on? You know, agenda for approval, to be seen as the giver or whatever. So first of all, yeah, let's look at what's my relationship with, with commitment and maybe it can be um, revived, refining and, and understood from a more holistic place. Commitment is not, I played lose, win, and now look at me. That's, again, there's some other agenda. Okay, and then I was giving the seminar analogy, like, you know, yeah, when we see that, you know, sometimes like it's tough, it's challenging, but when someone's like really surrendered, really committed, then they experience a challenging, this like kind of like, let's say, a child on a roller coaster, like, whoa, we don't know what's coming next, this is great, I love this, something like that. Whereas if there's like resistance, like, well, I'll give some, but then like every step of the way is hard. Mm -hmm. So those are some principles that will come to mind. And it relates to the principle of, um, um, you know, the, the chariot analogy. And it relates to the first principle of, if I know at this juncture, because what commit, what 100% commitment looks like, you know, maybe at 22 years old might actually look different at 42 at 62. And, and like, what if I'm pulling the reins too tight? in the name of commitment, then it's like, what is this not being honest with myself about? Commitment at this stage looks like, yeah, giving this, this much time and space for recreation, this much time and space for, um, for self-care, this much time and space for taking two extra globuments, like that, like that. And then if I'm you know, not getting sufficient for that, what, what's that about? Thanks for your question. Malini. Um, I, I think if we move this, everything goes off. So I will, I will summarize the question. Okay. What? No. No, actually. It's not what commitment actually means. Is that what you were trying to say? Like almost like in the beginning of your class, oh, okay. knowing something, experiencing something. Right, like, like if I would, for that meeting. So Nalini's asking.
drawn to that lifeline that Prabhupada's throwing um, in such an admirable, impressive way. And you're seeing, and you're seeing like how much tighter you could hold. And, and so I'm just getting that perspective too. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. I don't think I don't, um, feel that way. You're not, you're not seeing that. Yeah, yeah, I feel like my progress has been so, just so little Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your sharing. All right. Transcendence, the yeah. transcendental program. And then, and Experiencing much steadiness. I don't, yeah, um, I don't really discourage myself because my period of time is less and less. Yes. But it's still, it's still happening. Yeah, if, and that's. If, if you look over the years, you see you are becoming more attached to chanting even when life has its disturbances, which it always does. Still, there's like, you go find
kind of coming to me about like having the compassion and empathy with my own struggle. And I think my husband is always just telling me, just it's okay, it'll come. <laughs> then it will come with time. Just, just be kind and patient with yourself. And the inspiration for the command will come. And um, just taking that time. And I feel like I, I, I think there's always a value in it. Just feeling like sometimes it fluctuates. And I was thinking about my parents. They took initiation vows like, I don't know, 40 years ago or something. But like, I think there was many years that went by where they like did not chant any rounds or they're just taking care of their children or they're just busy or they're just not inspired. But like by the commitments drawing them back and it's all like my mom is chanting again, like 16 rounds and she's just kind of praying and they're just so in the fire. Like they're so into it, you know? I mean, like there's a rhythm. I mean, some people have different rhythms in their spiritual life. And I think the goal is that kind of like golden fire you were talking about in your class of staying. I'm just, I guess I'm also just, my, my mom would, my mom or dad, one of them was saying, you just, you want to be a devotee for your whole life, you know, <laughs> not just for this little short time. Like, How could we often emphasize better, better a steady moon than a shooting star? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think learning where can I commit that's realistic, that I can do my self care and take care of others in my integrity. And then, it, and then it's not this stressful thing. Um, just finding that and, and just being patient and compassionate. So, kind of like what it's kind of sparking for me too. In the response, and I'm still in this. How to balance with you know, giving giving my word or breaking the agreement, and then like the pain of that, and not trusting myself to actually do something powerful. So um, I'm just appreciating that point, especially made about self care, and um, that will ultimately be there. Just very physical, basic. Like I need to sleep. I need to eat. I need to. Take care of myself, go for a walk. Thanks for sharing about Thank you, Karen. Anandini had a question. I'm on my phone. I think it's working. I don't know. But she said, You were saying, since it's working somewhat, you were saying something about attaining Krishna, understanding his appearance is not dependent on our austerities and penance. How is it dependent? What is it dependent on then, and how do we get that? Could you say a little bit about that? Okay. And is this you there on the internet? Um, yes. Anandini, can you hear? Yes, I'm, I'm here, and I can hear right now. Okay. Great, great. <laughs> yeah, so Bhakti Yoga, devotional service, it's completely independent. It's completely independent. So... Bhakti is revealed to us when Bhakti wants to reveal herself to us, completely independent. Right? And, and, and at the same time, there, there are things we can do, certain austerity, look just like celebrating Janmashtami, celebrating Janmashtami, then, uh, or making a commitment to chant rounds. It doesn't like, then Krishna will be forced to reveal himself. No, there's no force. It's completely independent. At the same time, we do sadhana bhakti. We do sadhana. We offer a flower. We offer a stick of incense once a day. We sit down and do a bhajan with as much heartfelt feeling as we have. There's things we can do that in that personal reciprocation that inspires Krishna and bhakti devi. To, to appear in our heart, it, like that. So, Bhakti Devi is com completely transcendental. Krishna is not dependent on our austerities or how many rounds we chant. At the same time, there are things we can do, but it's not ultimately dependent on doing. Krishna and Bhakti Devi, Srimati Radharani, 
They're looking at what's, what's the quality of our offering. At the same time, so it's not about quantity, it's about quality. At the same time, quantity leads to quality. Quantity leads to quality. And if I'm steady in, qu in quantity, then I know, uh, a year later, yes, my quality is deeper. So I, I don't know if that responds to the question, but um, yeah, just like we say in the seminars, I know you facilitate foundational seminars. I know I say day three of every foundational seminar, Anandini facilitates in German, also in English. And um, I will say on day three, like when we get to intention walk and consciousness and the result, that, okay, so how, how can we, how can we transform our consciousness from consciousness and obstacles to consciousness and the result? And we give the, you know, the, uh, um, the electron and the electron field diagram and things like that. And we go, um, so w w what's the path? There's no path. It's simply a choice. Simply a choice. Conscious not those conscious the results. My, my consciousness to Krishna con. it's simply a choice. And there are things we can do. There are ways we can arrange our life. There are habits we can cultivate. There are habits we can give up that makes that choice easier. That makes that choice easy. And uh, so, so similarly, there are things we can do where, where Krishna is attracted to, to reveal himself to us. Bhakti Dev is attracted to reveal herself to us. Hare Krishna Dini, does that respond? Yes, it does respond. And it's, it's a little frustrating for me. <laughs> it, um, yeah, I just, I, I like to, there's this saying, you, you say it a lot, like, um, act as everything depends on us and pray as everything depends on God. Are yes, you, you got yes, it, you yeah. got it. And I just see my, my, uh, my conditioning is to, to think uh, I can do it all by myself, I need to do it by myself. And so to do some austerities or penance or chant rounds or get up at 1 a.m. to hear your class, that's something I can do. <laughs> and I noticed that, like recently, I do it with expectations. I do it with, uh, like, if I, if I do everything right, then I will understand more. I will, I will get more love. And, and, uh, and when it doesn't work out, I feel really frustrated. Mm. and so yeah I, I, I get it's about me trusting in Krishna that even like if I'm not all, all my doing is failing that he still reciprocates mm -hmm. yeah he, he might not be reciprocating according to the script that you wrote for him <laughs> and, you're, and you're trusting and we'll just say it is I'm it not trusting, point. but that's, I, I see, I, that's the direction I need to go. <laughs> it's a direction for your spiritual growth. For Anandini, it is 20 minutes before 3 a.m. right now. So I, pre I appreciate your studies. I'm sure that we can. <laughs> Thank <some> you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need it with your milk. Thank you, Anandina. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Right, appreciate it. Sri Krishna Janmasmi Ki. Jai. Lord Sri Krishna Ki. Jai. Bhagavad Gita Ki. Jai. Sri Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Jai. This is cellular data. Jai. I don't even understand this whole thing. <laughs> I'm really, so is that based on my internet from Windstream? Yeah. Or you've got your own. This internet? is just cellular data from like the phone company. All right. So why don't we just do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess it's working okay. You have a. Uh... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rebecca, your time. It's time for Rebecca to leave. When you guys are receiving and uploading. So, like, you have people there in other rooms on computers that are also receiving the signal. So if it's just being sent out. All right, it's not even working. Yeah. All right, Krishna. Okay. Where did Rebecca go? She's already disappeared. I need to charge this. 
It's a really, um, it's a, it's a cool course, and so I'd be happy to, like, serve in some way if there's interest in it. Because it's, it's a discussion with a group, it's a group thing, it's yeah. like a kind of group process. Well, I think, I think, what that is, that's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Um, do you have another? We are thinking maybe to come soon.